breaking news right now on KKL 9 News at 4. I know I have to do the hard work. I have to do the really damn hard work to repair and to restore, you know, the, the breach of trust that, that I've lost with so many folks. You know, but my district does deserve representation. Breaking news on KCAL 9 News at 4. The exclusive everyone wants, but only KCAL 9 has it. For the first time, L.A. City Councilman Kevin DeLeon gives his side of the story on that controversy that prompted calls for him to resign. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Juan Fernandez. And I'm Amy Johnson in for Susie Sa. He said he would not mince words nor defend the defenseless. Kevin DeLeon exclusively told KCAL 9 he has a long road ahead to mend fences with the city, his colleagues, and his constituents. But for now, he's not resigning. KCAL 9 political reporter Tom Wade joins us now with the one-on-one -on -one everyone was after. Tom? And it was a revealing interview. Obviously, we hadn't heard from him yet, so it was interesting to hear what he said about mm -hmm. uh, what transpired. Yeah. So it was a very somber Kevin DeLeon, as we reported. He was resolute about not stepping down. He acknowledged he failed in the moment and is pledging to begin a healing process. But, of course, the question is, can, he, he, can the city heal if he holds on to his seat? Well, um, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, I guess my first question to you is the question all of L.A. has for you, which is, what is Kevin DeLeon going to do? Will you resign your council seat? Let me say that I'm not going to mince words. I'm not going to deflect blame. I'm not going to def defend the defenseless. This past week, I've taken inventory with with my family, with my friends, with my staff. And I've raised a, a, a light, a, a, a bright light, you know, doing self-examination. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to my constituents. I'm sorry to my colleagues. I'm sorry to the family of Mike Bond and to, to my family to all those who have supported me, especially the janitors and security officers and the hotel workers, because I failed. I failed to step up and shut down a conversation. The words that were incendiary, words that were painfully hurtful, and I didn't do that. And I'm so sorry for the city of LA for not stepping up and being the leader that they expect me to be. Listen, I, I grew up in poverty. The youngest child of a single immigrant mother with a third grade education. And I represent a district that's among the poorest in the entire nation. It was devastated because of the coronavirus. I had the highest infection and mortality rate. I had, I have the largest homeless population in the entire city of Los Angeles. It's a district that's had it's been underserved, it's been under-resourced, it's been underfinanced. it's been underrepresented for years, if not, for not decades. Mm -hmm. And my constituents deserve representation. I know I have to do the hard work. I have to do the really damn hard work to repair and to restore, you know, the, the breach of trust that, that I've lost with so many folks. You know, but my district does deserve representation. And I plan on continuing to represent my constituents. This has been really difficult and really painful. Yeah. And I'm just so profoundly sorry for the, the hurt that I've caused, you know, for so many communities in the city of Los Angeles. Do you think that that apology, though, will be enough when the calls for your resignation have come from as high as the president of the United States to the mayor, to all the council members? I mean, how do you, how do you face those council members when going to work, if they're all saying it's not tenable for him to come back? I have to repair those relationships and regain the trust of my colleagues. I have to repair and regain the trust of others possible, who though? have confided in me. I've always been against, up against many, many challenges. And obviously, this is surely the biggest one I've ever confronted in my life. Mm -hmm. But my constituents do deserve representation. We need to heal as a city, and we need to come together and heal as a city. And I want to be part of that. And I want to be part of that. But let me press you on that a little bit. Is it possible, though, given what we've heard, for you to be part of that? 
We shall find out. We shall find out. First and foremost, I have to repair my relationship with my constituents, mm -hmm. the people who elected me to represent them in City Council District 14. I have to repair relationships with so many other communities that have been so vital and so supportive of me. I had to repair my relationships with my colleagues. That's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It won't be easy, and I know that. I have to do the hard work, and I have to roll up my sleeves. But I want to help heal the city. I want to help heal the wounds that have existed for many years, if not decades. And I want to be part of that. Um, I mentioned the, the people who are not supporting you, but it, has there been anyone who is supporting you who would come out publicly and say that they would like to see you stay in office and make these, you know, proceed with this healing that you're talking about? I have a lot of folks who have been very supportive of me during this very difficult moment. Uh, folks have voiced their thoughts and opinions, folks who I've, who I've apologized to profusely. You know, that I failed in that moment, and I failed to step up. I failed to not shut down a conversation that I should have shut down. Uh, and I accept, you know, my full responsibility. Like I said, I'm not going to deflect blame. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mince words, you know. That's not the Kevin DeLeon that so many folks know. That's not the Kevin DeLeon that so many folks, you know, have known as a leader on, on so many issues. But I accept my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I accept my responsibility for a lot of the pain that exists today. Take me inside that conversation, because uh, I think a lot of people are just sort of horrified by the concept of it, you know, and, and obviously you're not the first politicians to have sort of a back room, you know, situation like this where a group of politicians are sort of meeting to kind of carve up the city and talk about this sort of redistricting issue. How did this meeting come about and what was the ultimate goal? The meeting was called by then council uh, president, uh, Nuri Martinez. Uh, she asked us to attend this meeting. Uh, I was invited to the meeting. Um, the role that I wanted to play is I wanted to have a voice uh, in terms of representation uh, for my district that irrespective if I were to be there for many years or not that many years, that it would have a voice. Uh, it's a largely Latino neighborhood. Uh, it is largely poor. Uh, it is a community that has been understaffed, under-resourced, under um, uh, finance and underrepresented for many years, if, if not decades. So I wanted to make sure that we had a voice at the table, that we would have political representation, because political representation does matter. Absolutely. And that's why I was there. Right, and I mean, of course, there's been past injustices, too, for Latino uh, representation. But the problem is, during this meeting, you know, we heard Gil Cedillo say very clearly that he wanted to carve up historic African-American seats and change them over to Latino seats. People hear that and they, they hear a very racist uh, situation playing out there and it seemed like nobody stood up and said, hey, no, that's that's totally wrong. Yeah, but it didn't work out. It didn't, at the end of the day, it didn't pan out that way. That. Yeah, without question, folks are entitled to their thoughts, to their opinions. I can't speak for someone else yeah. on what their thoughts, what comes out of their but mouth. But you didn't stop them, though. You know, and I failed in my leadership in doing so, and that's why I failed. I failed to, I didn't step up, and I didn't intervene, and I didn't put a stop to it. And that, I am forever sorry for that. Right. No, I, I understand. Um, Nuri Martinez obviously said something absolutely vile. She compared Mike Bonin's young black son to um, a little monkey. At that point, I mean, you sort of touched on this, but why not say, that's really horribly racist and not acceptable, or I, just get up and leave. I, I was I was just shocked. I, I was completely shocked. Obviously, but the you video made a joke after. The audio but you made a capture. joke about the, her something like a, a purse right after that. So I mean, is that really shock? The, the comment was directed more towards Nuri Martinez and her penchant for having luxury accessories and luxury goods. It was a joke towards her and not towards Mike Bonin's family. But nonetheless, I apologize to Mike Bonin's family. Uh, profusely. How did that go? I joke was directed towards her. Right. And I'm just curious, when you did apologize to, to Councilman Bond, what, what did he accept that apology? I called him. Um, I got his voicemail. Um, I left him a voicemail. I was going to apologize publicly uh, at the city council meeting last week, Tuesday. Uh, obviously, it was, it was very difficult. I didn't get that opportunity to do so. Um, but um, I, I, I do apologize profusely to Mike Bonnet. What was that moment in council like? I know you were there for a few moments, and uh, Councilman Bonnet gave him a very emotional 
uh, speech on the council floor. Um, did you speak with him at that point, or? No, it was difficult because yeah. it was it was chaotic. It was uh, raucous. Um, it was a very difficult, very painful meeting. Yeah. Um, I stepped away uh, towards the back so it could calm down, and uh, the council president at the time, uh, the, the presiding officer, could conduct the meeting. Uh, it was it was difficult. It, it was very painful. Um, and you know, in terms of that, how, like, what does it look like getting you? Since you're not going to resign at this point, how do you go back to a meeting right now when? You had well the acting president O'Farrell saying he can't come back here. We're not going to have meetings. And now, uh, Krikorian, I don't I don't know exactly whether he's made that declaration. But uh, w what does it look like to, for Kevin DeLeon to look, go back to a council meeting at this point? I have to do the hard work. I have to regain the trust of my colleagues. It won't be easy. And I understand that. And that's why the past week I've taken a lot of reflection with my family, with my staff, with, with my closest friends. This has been very, very painful, very, very, very painful. And I, I'm sorry to all of my colleagues. I, I, I'm sorry to my family, to Mike Bonin's family, to all the communities who have been hurt uh, by that meeting. I, I failed. I failed in that moment in time to step up and shut that meeting down. I, I failed in not stepping up in, in stopping the incendiary words that were being expressed. I mean, your critics have already said, so this is no shock, that they'll say, well, that's great, he wants to heal, he wants to do the hard work, but why can't he do that outside of the council? Why can't he do that on his own and let the city move forward without him? Is it a selfish decision to say, I'm going to stay put, I'm going to do this? Is it for you or is it for the city? It's not about me. It's about City District 14, a district that's been underrepresented, that has gone through uh, much difficulty uh, in the past without no political representation. Mm -hmm. It's about a district that was devastated, eviscerated by the coronavirus. We had the highest infection and mortality rate. It is a district that is on the brink of adding more individuals, you know, into the homelessness ranks uh, because of the expiration of the eviction moratorium. It's because of a district that is home to the largest homeless population. They do, they do deserve political representation. Mm -hmm. This won't be easy, and I understand that completely. And that's why I will always be sorry for not stepping up, for not stopping the meeting, for not shutting it down, you know, and condemning right then and there, you know, the the. But I mean, would you words. be apologizing if this recording never became public? Would you, you know, you wouldn't be apologizing now, right? I mean, it would be a moot point. Actually, no, because I remember leaving the meeting, actually made, making a note, a verbal note to Councilmember Gil Cedillo that I was shocked. Of the words that came out of uh, Nori Martinez's mouth. Of course, that's not captured in audio or video. But I remember walking down the hallway and saying that clearly. To your point, I mean, I've been with you on a number of stories with the hard work that you've done. I mean, you have, you've, you have a long storied political career. I mean, not just here in LA, but president of the Senate. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's, it, it's interesting sitting here right now with you in, in, in this context because you have done so much good work. But but I just wonder for you how you, how, how you move forward in your career after this. I have to do the hard work. I have to repair. I have to help heal. I, help, I have to help restore. And that means rolling up my sleeves and engaging with my constituents. That means engaging with the communities that were deeply pained, that, that will were Will they engage angered. with you, do you think? You know, that's my hope. It's my hope that they will engage for that dialogue because we have to heal together. We can't heal at the exclusion, you know, of those who help cause the pain. We have to help, help, we have to help move forward together, and we have to heal together. What's the first step? I mean, I mean, how, like, what does that look like? Is it, does it mean reaching out to certain uh, community organizations, community leaders? I've reached out to various leaders and organizations. I, I still have, uh, as you can imagine, a, a long list to, to still call. To, to reach out, to have the dialogue, uh, to, to have those hard conversations, mm -hmm. to, to listen, to learn, you know, and to help repair, you know, the pain that's in our community. Um, have you spoken with, with Nuri Martinez or with, with Gil Cedillo? I haven't had a chance no. to speak with her. Yeah. Or, or Ron Herrera? I have not spoken with Ron Herrera. No. Um, 
how, when you look at sort of the, the, the macro here, and you were talking about sort of reaching out to different organizations, how do you expect to be received when you reach out? I think there'll be a lot of pain because the conversations that have already have begun, there's pain, confusion, because they know that's not the leader who I've always been. Um, but I failed, and I recognize that I, I, I failed during that moment, that I didn't step up. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, as it should be. I know it's going to be hard. And uh, that's why I don't, I'm not going to mince words, or I'm not going to, to deflect, deflect blame. I think your constituents and the people watching this want to know what's in your heart, right? Who, who's the real Kevin DeLeon? Is it the Kevin DeLeon sitting here right now with me? Or is it the Kevin DeLeon who was in that meeting who didn't step up, who didn't say anything? So I think that's going to be obviously your big mission now is to sell what you're trying to tell me, right? Which is this is who I am, not, not the guy in that meeting. Is that right? I failed at that moment where I should have stepped up. But that's not who I am. That's not my moral compass. That's not what what guides me that's not a reflection of my my values well, i mean like so what were you thinking in that moment then what was like when you heard her say that the the comment about the sun or and then you made the follow-up joke what was what was happening in your i mind? made a flippant remark yeah. you know that i should have never made you know i was both in shock and at the same time i made the flippant remark that i should never have made yeah. i should never made that flippant remark but people know me for my commitment my dedication for standing up for those who have little or no voice, for standing up and protecting the most marginalized, the most vulnerable in our society, mm -hmm. on a whole variety of, of issues. That's where I've dedicated my life as have. an activist. You absolutely have. Yeah. As, 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 as an elected official, that wasn't me. And that's why I, I failed. Mm -hmm. I failed in my leadership for not standing up and doing what I should have done. Last question, and feel free to add anything you like. You touched on it before. We kind of discussed it, the issue of staying. You know, you want to represent the people who voted for you. I, I hear you. But why not let somebody else do that at this point? Why not let to get rid of the distraction of what you're going through and let another person represent your constituents? Because right now, it might be very difficult. You've been stripped of your community assignments in city council. So now, why not? Would, would it be better for someone else to represent those constituents? I have an incredible staff that loves the district just as much as I do. And I have incredible support from our constituents within the district in CD14. I've got to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. I've got to repair. And I've got to help heal. I have to help regain the trust of, of my colleagues on the council and so many community members within the district and outside of the district. That's a hard work that I'm prepared to do. All right. Anything else? I think that'd be right there. All right. Well, I really appreciate it. I mean, I, I know it's difficult, and obviously this is an incredibly hard time. And I, I, as I said to you and your staff and to uh, Marcelena, um, but I appreciate your, Thank you. your time. Well, there you have it. What's not clear at this point is what future council meetings will look like. As you heard there, De Leon has been stripped of his committee assignments. So at this point, we don't know what his immediate plan is, but okay. you heard there... He very much intends to come back to work. But, I mean, what's next for him? And, right. and what is his plan really for returning to the council? Yeah, I mean, I, that was one of the questions I was trying to be really direct about is, what is what's the next mm -hmm. step mm -hmm. on your checklist? Does it mean that you're going to show up to work next Friday, next, you know, whatever the next council meeting that he intends to go to? He didn't really get to that. I don't think he knows. I think he's trying to, as he said there in the interview, establish connections with, or not connections, but uh, meetings and conversations, dialogue with various community leaders and organizations that could potentially, you know, maybe maybe give him the pathway to yeah. staying put. But I, again, it just, I guess we'll have to see how this plays out because... It's very hard to see him walking into council chambers at this point. No doubt. Well, we've seen the protests, obviously, Tom. Does De Leon have any uh, public support right now? Right. I mean, that was one of the questions, too. I asked him about, you know, has anyone come out to publicly support him? And he said there that he does have support, but he did not name any prominent community leaders yeah. or organizations at this point that are supporting him. And it is pretty unprecedented for the president of the United States, mm -hmm. you know, on down mm -hmm. to call for the resignations. But... 
uh, he seems determined to try and do the healing. And as we asked him, why not do the healing away from council? But he, you heard yep. him there. He wants to do it while he stays. Yep. As we always say, time will tell, right? Time will tell. All right, Tom, thank you so thank much you for that. Great job. Mm -hmm.